Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper. It's a hot Sunday afternoon out at the retreat location and I'm kind of falling behind in my video making this weekend but I will get it done. I have two more videos I need to make. One video is on two sets of handheld radios, GMRS, FRS radios that the Midland Corporation was kind enough to send. They had been following the micro mobile video series here on the channel with Harden Power Systems Operator G1. They reached out to me and asked if they could send a couple of handhelds that complement the micro mobile. So we have them down in the shed. That'll be the next video. They're actually very cool handhelds. And the other video I want to make is on packet radio. I've been able to successfully navigate the network out here in West Virginia to where I feel comfortable enough to make a video for you guys here on the channel to demonstrate the potential of packet radio and how it can support emergency communications and preparedness. But the topic of this video is off-grid solar power. For those of you who follow my channel, you'll know that last weekend I made a big mistake with my system and dropped my battery bank down to a 12% state of charge. And this is well below the level recommended by Trojan Battery Corporation, I have four Trojan T105 REs, of a 50% state of charge. Now normally those batteries have never gone below 70% state of charge because we only use them on the weekends. We get out here Friday night, we'll use it on Saturday, and Sunday we're packing up and leaving and it hasn't been an issue. My system's vulnerability has always been the small solar array on my system. I only have two panels up there on the roof that represent 300 watts of charging power and they generate together in peak sun maybe 16 amps of charge current. Now I do have an MPPT controller that gives me a little bit of a boost but that's well below what I think the system should have. I know there's a lot of theories out there how much charge capacity you should have I try to work with the rule of thumb that your charge capacity should be 10% of your battery bank. So with 450 amp hours of battery bank, I should be able to put 45 amps of current into those batteries, and I can't. Right now I can only do 16. And this vulnerability was really exposed this past weekend when I ran the batteries down so low, my array didn't have enough amperage to get them back up to where they needed to be. I actually had to use a plug-in battery charger for a car and individually charge each battery because they're six volt batteries to get them back up equalize them go through check all the levels so we're back to normal I think things are going to be fine but we're definitely going to upgrade the system here out at the retreat location behind me here I got the first part that I'm going to need and that's a 12 foot long 5 inch schedule 40 steel pipe we're going to ground mount some new panels up here on this terrace above the retreat location that's why I'm up here in the baking sun I have a good field of view looking east and then looking south with no trees in the way. As a ground mounted array vice a roof mounted array, I'll be able to change the azimuth to follow the sun and I'll be able to change the angle of the panels for seasonal changes in the sun. So when the sun sits lower in the sky during the winter, I can come up here and actually dip the panels down. The other advantage I'll have with the ground mounted array is the ability to do maintenance. The two panels I have now are on the roof. I hate heights. I hate ladders. I don't like going up there, so we're going to leave those panels there. We're going to do another project with those. So the new panels are going to go up here on this plateau overlooking the retreat. And with the magic of editing, I'll try to insert some video of the panels I have. They're actually inside the retreat location. Here you can see I have three Kerasea KU265 watt panels. And very carefully, I'll try to tip the camera over so you can see the data plate on the back, get some of the specs on the panels. I've had these sitting in the garage back in Virginia and we finally moved them out this weekend. I also picked up a solar panel combiner box with the circuit breakers by Midnight Solar and I got all the parts for that and I also got three sets of MC4 cables to bring the panels into the combiner box. I'm still waiting on cabling to go from the combiner box to the charge controller but that's going to be another video and another project. The ultimate goal is to remove everything from the retreat location. We're going to take the batteries out from under the deck, we're going to pull the inverter, we're going to pull the charge controller, and put everything up here on the plateau in a little building next to this pipe. This will allow me to keep my DC runs really short, and what we'll do is we'll remote the AC or alternating current from this location down to the retreat location and interface it with the power panel down there. Now this project isn't going to happen overnight. This is a long-term project. I hope to have it done by January. I think the last big piece I need is the actual mounting brackets and I got a quote from wholesalesolar.com so once I can put a few pennies back I'll get that ordered get that up here to the retreat location. I've already talked to the excavator to dig the hole up here to put the pipe in the ground 
and my neighbor's going to loan me his cement mixer. So hopefully in the next six weeks we'll at least get this pipe mounted and get some of the structure down here so we can start putting up a little building and wrap this project up by January. So that's a little update on my off-grid solar power system, the mistakes I've made, the vulnerabilities the system has had, and the path forward to make things right and make the system a little better. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prepper out at the retreat location working on the off-grid solar power system. More to come. Thanks for watching, guys.